on the set in about five minutes. Are we all ready to go in the control room? All set and ready to go. Okay, great. We're going to start off by doing picture in picture from the newsroom to camera one. So if you could route Ox 3 down in the newsroom and then send Ox 3 back to the studio floor for the rest of the show, that'd be great. Okay? Right. And then yeah. next I want you to make sure that you set up the clip in the game so that we have nice good color on our graphics. And then we're going to go ahead and start by pre-shooting the weather segment. So if you could get this all set up for the chroma shoot, that'd be great. Okay? Yeah. Okay, if you have any questions, just go ahead and read the manual. It's right there, all right? We'll be ready to go about five minutes, okay? Okay. So, do you understand anything she just said? No. I've just, like, cut and switched in the beginning class, but that's about it. Well, I mean, we can always read the manual. Did I really just hear a Becca student say, read? Well, folks, stranger things have happened. Hi. I'm your host, Matt Hageman. You might remember me from training videos such as video lighting techniques and how to avoid a radiation cloud. There's nothing to fear. In fact, the switcher is actually really easy to learn. You just need to know what you're working with. I'm going to demystify the switcher by breaking down signal flow, which routes the CG and sends signals from the switcher to the studio floor. Then, we're going to explore how to adjust the attributes in the switcher, such as the transparency of CGs and adding a border to the picture-in-picture. Picture. Finally, we're going to take our green screen lighting skills and put them to good use. You will see it is as simple as the push of a button and the turn of a dial to send your talent to not only China, Russia, or even the moon. All right, are you ready? Then let's hop on the Magic Ox Bus. Next stop, Signal Flow. I've used the switcher before. I know this is the program bus, and when you select something here, it shows up on the VTR. Yeah, don't they call that the line cut? Exactly, and this is the preview bus, and it allows you to ready the image, and then you can take it before you cut or dissolve to it. Can't use the buttons or that bar? You can use the take buttons for hard cuts, and you can use the fader bar to manually transition. What would you do if you wanted to cut two sources at the same time? Let's say video and graphic. Simple. You would just select what you want to do the next transition to be. And most of the time, you could just cut the background, but you can also cut the background and the key when it depends if you want to cut them in or cut them out. Oh, that's easy enough, but what about the ox bus Matt was talking about? The ox bus. Uh, you got me. Maybe we should read the manual. Read? <laughs> you mean you're not just gonna start pushing all the buttons? No way! Jen would kill us if we started pressing buttons. Yeah, we better stick with the manual. Yeah. Why don't you watch the video instead? Roll, track, and take! The auxiliary bus, better known as the aux bus, is used to route signals to and from the switcher. Using the aux bus, you can assign sources to use for your downstream key and chroma key, such as the character generator. You can also assign which video source you want to use for either picture-in-picture -picture 1 or picture-in-picture -picture 2. After you have assigned which sources to use for DSK, keyer, and PNP, then, you can use the aux bus to send your choice of signal to the waveform monitor, multi-viewer, or studio floor. Aux 1 sends the signal to the waveform monitor. Aux 2 sends the signal to the multi-viewer. And Aux 3 sends the signal to the studio floor. The most common signal used on the studio floor would be the program feed. Another signal often used on the studio floor would be the signal from the video playback. To change this signal, you would assign aux3 to the video playback source. That makes sense. Just use the aux bus to send signals to and from the switcher. What if I wanted to make the picture and picture bigger and give it a border? That's easy. Use the function menu here, these ones here, to adjust the attributes such as the width, softness, and gain. Why would you want to do that? so you can control the image that you're superimposing over the video. What would be a good setting to start with? Well, our graphics looks best at 6.2, but be careful not to turn it up the gain up too high 
because then you'll lose image quality. Sweet. Now let's set up the chroma key. The chroma key here. Yeah, I don't know how to do that. I bet it's in the manual. Well, we could maybe re... I mean, check it out. Let's check it out. Check it out. Oh, look at that. So, all we really got to do is turn select on, find your shade of green, and then turn it off. That's it. And we're able to figure it out by reading the manual. The manual. What? Becca students actually read and learned something? Like I said, stranger things have definitely happened. I'm your host, Matt Hageman. Please stay tuned for the next installment in the Becca How-To Series. <laughs>